Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 303 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I am your host, Lewis Spears, and it's time to talk uh, about something, you know, you, you hear about these things happening and because you're a man, you, there's no way for you to understand how true it is or what it's like, you know, and, and the same is true when men complain about a big problem that men have. Like, um, you know, how annoying women are. Uh, women can't really understand it. But there's... Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. There's, you're all perfect. Um, there's, 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 there's a problem that, that, that a lot of women complain about that's, that I think that is almost impossible for a man to understand. And that is just like how, um, you know, you can be objectified and, and, and be menaced and, and feel scared. Right by by men basically, and it's not something that men can can ever fully understand. It's just something that we just have to believe and and trust women about. And I really learned that because uh, I I was out with my girl and we were followed by. Was well, that funny? <laughs> is that funny? No. I'm about to tell you a story about how how me I was out with my girl and we were fucking stalked and followed home. <laughs> this is true. Okay, I'm not sorry, kidding, sorry. and it's not funny. I was followed home. Me and my girl were out, and and this this uh, this male, right, starts following my girl home because he thought she was really sexy, <laughs> and it was scary, and it's not funny because it's true. He was a dog, <laughs> and the girl I'm talking about is not my girlfriend; it's my dog. All right, well, I'm war so, but that doesn't make it less oh, bad. No. Oh, great! The dog stopped recording the fucking podcast. Bob, sit down. I'll send you over to his house. She, sorry, she has trauma. Sit down. Um, so look, I'm walking home, and uh, I walk past this house that I never walk past. Okay, sorry. Can you? Fucking <laughs> Can you please? I bring your dog bed out. I make I make it nice and comfortable. I sit you down, relax, and stay there. Okay, you we're, we're not talking to you. I'm talking to the camera. Okay, so I'm walking my dog home, uh, and we walk past this house that we never walk past because it started raining. And dude, <laughs> it, it was actually no joke aside, scary as fuck. So I'm walking down the street, and uh, and then I just uh, look behind me for some reason. Right, you know when you just you're, oh, I'm being followed, <laughs> and you go, "What's going on?" I look behind me, and dude, this fucking huge like like white pit bull oh, looking thing oh, is shit. following us down the street and it's like really close to the ground it's hackles are up and it's and it's following us and i just start walking away and it's really slowly and bob hasn't seen it yet i'm walking and i and i just i just go i'm not going to look at that dog i'm not going to make eye contact with it and hopefully it'll go away and then it follows us for like two houses and then it gets right up to right up to my dog and i'm like okay well then i turn around and i go it's time to fucking I turn around and it's like hackles are raised. It's like sniffing. It's looking really suspicious. Tail is like straight. Like all of the horrible body language signs. I'm like, okay, this is going to be my first fucking dog attack scenario. Because Frankston has scary dog culture where like everyone wants a scary dog. Everyone wants a big fucking tough like, yeah, fuck, I want a dog that can fucking... A scary dog, all right? Now, I say, I think that's fucking stupid, and I say this as someone who has a scary dog, but that's not what I wanted. When I got it from the fucking pound, they told me it was going to be a lot smaller. We wanted a staffy, we got a giant monster, all right? I think it's a pit bull mixed with a fucking Great Dane, all right? But she is lovely. She just looks very scary, and I, re and I resent people profiling her. But I was profiling the fuck out of this other dog who was stalking mine, and it gets really close. And I, I look at this dog. It's wearing a collar. There's no owner in sight. And I'm like, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the collar and I'm going to throw it on the road if it does anything. I'm like, I'm like going, I'm going to grab the collar, and, and if I can't grab the collar, I'm going to grab its back legs and I'm going to pull them until one of them comes out of its socket. <laughs> I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna maim this fucking dog because yes. it's gonna it's gonna kill mine because she I know what she's gonna do if she gets bit she's gonna scream and run away because that happened at a dog park once uh, uh this big fucking insane Malinois like really bit her on the belly 
was chasing her around and, and you know, bite, bit her on the belly, which is like, I'm trying to kill you. And she was just like, oh, you got me. I'm running away. This is a game. <laughs> and I was like, nah, I'm pretty sure that guy was trying to kill you, man. Uh, so that's, uh, I don't know if anyone else fantasizes about this or plots out how they would really fucking hurt another dog, <laughs> but I have it all planned out. <laughs> and I was, I started, I, this dog's following and I'm like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to end up on the news. Not scratch that. The dog's owners are going to end up on the news going, he didn't deserve it. <laughs> um, but he did. Anyway, f- fucking luckily, my dog turns around and is just like, oh, what's up, mate? And just immediately is like, let's fucking play. Oh. And uh, diffuses the situation. <laughs> and then the other dog like snaps out of its like stalking behavior and then start, they start kind of playing. But it was still like... It was still like, you know, when dogs play and one of them's having a lot of fun and the other one's like, oh, I wonder if I could fucking get its neck. You know, like that type of uh, playing. And uh, and it was it was not de-sexed either, Ugh. which is such a fucking red flag for another dog. So, uh, and owner nowhere to be, be seen. And then from the other side of the street, this shop's on the other side of the street, this woman comes out and she's like, do you need some help? And I was like, do you know this dog? Is it friendly? Like I'm, st- I'm like, I'm like, my right leg is wound up, like ready to fucking <laughs> boot it as hard as I can. I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to go, if I have to grab this thing, I'm going left hand first because I need the hands on my, on my right hand for riding. Uh, I need the fingers on my right hand. And, uh, and she goes, I go, is this thing friendly? And she goes, yes, it is. I'm like, all right. And uh, <laughs> apparently it just gets out all the time. All the time it gets out. She goes, oh, I, I think it's just gotten out. So with this woman, it will not leave my dog alone. So when I kind of figure out, all right, I think this dog is not going to kill mine. I take it back to the house. I take my dog back to the original house where the woman is, like three doors down. It's not even her dog. And uh, the only way we can get it to go back in the front yard is to pu- pull my dog in the front yard yeah. with it. Oh, no. And then we have to like do the switcheroo, pull my dog out the gate and then shut it. <laughs> and then it's in the front yard and the front yard, the, f- the fence is lower than the fucking dog's. It's like the dog's chest height. So all it has to do is just jump over the fence. There's a huge like human sized hole in the fence that the dog was just like too amped up in, in the moment to realize if it thought it could just you know, move a little bit further away from us to go through the hole and then it will be back out. And then it runs all the way up the front yard, like just barking and whining, like going, oh, come back, I'm horny. <laughs> and apparently just gets out all the fucking time. And it was, uh, I think it was like almost an adult dog. So, which is probably why it ended in play and not in fight. But it's just like, man, if that thing, that's the type of shit where like, uh, you know, beloved family dog mauls toddler <laughs> yes. you know like it, it's that type of fucking and yeah the owners just weren't even home so it's like i don't know it's fucking crazy and then i'm getting on my karen shit like do i re- report this to the fucking <laughs> council because because uh, the woman goes oh he gets out all the time mm. and i'm like well you know it, I'm, I'm like do i report this to the council for the dog's own safety or are they just gonna rock up and go yeah we're gonna kill your dog and then i feel horrible <laughs> you should write them a note yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to write them a note. I'm going to go, hey, you know, if this happens again, I'm going to have to fucking... Because it's so dangerous, that type of shit. Even just for the dog getting hit by a car, you know? Um, so, so yeah. Um, if, there, if, there are any, if there are any male dogs listening to this, don't follow female dogs <laughs> home, okay? Um, it's really scary. And, and it, and, uh, yeah. And then I had to fucking go home. Like I was just, my whole body was like, all right, we're in a dog attack situation. And then I just had to go home and, and I think this medicine that I'm on, it doesn't make me feel anxious, right? Cause anxiety was one of the side effects of it. I'm a daffodil, the, what, the stuff that keeps me awake. It doesn't make me feel anxious, but if I feel anxious or if I get a scare, I can't come down from that for hours. So, and I hadn't had this until this moment. I come home and I'm like fucking, what was like a 40 second thing that should have been like, oh, thank God it's fine. I come home and I'm like, I, I need to kill someone's dog just to feel all right. <laughs> <laughs> My body's like, it's still out there. Go back and kill it. Um, so I ended up fucking taking myself for a walk by myself <laughs> for like 40 minutes until I felt better. Um, great little tip. Nothing, no problem could be made worse by a walk. Um, unless your problem is my legs hurt, 
Um, <laughs> in that case, you're fucked, you know? Take the wheelchair out for a spin. <laughs> um, so then I, so then I, I, I go to the, the, I had to go to the orthodontist, right? Which is whenever I have to do that, with whenever fucking people are putting painful tools and steel in my fucking mouth all day, I really have to like try to relax myself beforehand because it's so uncomfortable. But I just went there with like ready, ready for a dog attack in my fucking chest, uh, and I had to do that. And I'll get into that. But what what happened on the way back from from the orthodontist is uh, is uh, is just makes me so angry. Mm. All right, now. We've had a long history on this show of uh, of shaming cafes for <laughs> the way that they present their cup sizes. Okay, oh, no. there are only two acceptable ways to run a cafe. All right, it's really only one. Okay, if you have multiple sizes of your drinks, there's a specific naming convention that you must use. That for some reason. Way too many of you cafe owners fuck up, okay? You have three sizes, and it goes small, medium, large. That's it. You have the small one, and it's called that why? Because it's small. Because it's small, all right? And then you have the biggest one, and that's called large because it's large. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle, that's the medium. And the, the definition of medium is the average between the two. The medium of the two. That's why it's called medium. Now, some cafes... They go small and large. I'll accept that. You should have three cup sizes just because you'll make more money out of the big one and then less people will get the small one because they'll go, oh, I'll get the one in the middle. All right? That's just good business practice. But also, when you only have a small and a large, the large is really medium-sized when I want a large. But that's fine as long as it's called small and large. If you call it small and medium, close your cafe. You don't deserve to run it, okay? But here's what people do. Is cafes, they fuck up at the start of their business and they and they have two cup sizes, small and large, okay? And whatever, we all learn from our mistakes and we all like to make more money and we like to make our business more efficient, so they add another cup size. But what do they do? Do they change all, all the whole cup size to go small, medium, large? No, they don't. They stick with... They're stupid folly and they keep small, large, and then they add on a fucking extra large. <laughs> That's not how it works. If your large is replaced by an even bigger cup, your large is now your medium. You have three sizes, small, medium, large. You don't have a small and a large and an extra large because the one in the middle isn't that big. That's why you included a third cup size. That's a medium, brother. Shut your cafe. I will not accept silly <laughs> names either. If you have a silly name for the big one, fuck you. <laughs> All right, I am I am 29 years old. I'm not walking to a cafe and going, yeah, can I get the big boy cappuccino? <laughs> it's a large. The fucking cafe in Hobart called it a bucket. No, it's not. <laughs> That's right. I'm not drinking a buck. <laughs> if you serve the cunt in a bucket, I'll call it a bucket. Give me a pail <laughs> of cappuccino and I'll call it a pail. All right, I will I will only only accept a silly name if you have five cup sizes. Because then you're out of ideas. If you have five, fair enough. If you have four, it's small, medium, large, extra large. Great. Love that. If you have five. Double extra large, it's too many syllables, you know. So, and also having five sizes is kind of silly anyway. So, fuck it. Let's do a silly one. You know, that's like when you have two, three three or four photos. You do a nice one. You do you do a cool one. You do just a candid one. And then you go, oh, let's do a silly one, <laughs> right? That's fine. If you have five cu cup sizes, you've earned it, brother. Call it whatever the fuck you want. Okay, I was I I saw a cafe that called their third cup size the jitters. Nah, <laughs> no, dude, close your shop. Okay, now I've seen a lot, and I've, we've also had in our Patreon Discord we have a whole section dedicated to cafe shaming, where when people see stupid cup sizes, they'll post and shame them as they deserve. Okay, I have been doing this and complaining about this 
maybe for seven years since I first complained about this, I just saw the worst one ever mm. and it's in Frankston. And I'm not going to say the name of the place <laughs> because if I told you that, you, it would have to close, all right? The health inspector would come in and and make up some trumped up charges just to shut the place down. Oh. They go, yeah, there's a human shit on the grill. <laughs> and they go, what What do you mean this human shit? And he goes, yeah, that's, you're going to have to close down. And we didn't poo on the grill. Go, yeah, well, obviously you did. Anyway, do you have some toilet paper? You know, like that's what would happen. The health inspector would shit on the grill just to close your fucking place down. All right? So I, I would say the, the, the previous like worst one I've seen was, yeah, like small, large bucket. Well, there was another one in Tassie that, that named their big one after like a big Tasmanian ship. And there was like six syllables in it. <laughs> that was the worst one, which I think I've complained about. This one, okay. <laughs> they fucked up like, like a lot of these cafes do where they opened and when they first opened, they only had two cup sizes, which annoyed me, but it was good. So I still went there. They had a small and a large, okay. I hadn't been there for a few months I went to my orthodontist appointment on the way back. All right. I go in there. They've got three cup sizes. And I thought, oh, here we go. A small and a medium and a large. No. All right. They had the smallest size was the small. Okay. Great. The largest size, which was the new size they added, was the large. Great. The one in the middle was called the OG large. Shut your fucking shop. That doesn't... How confusing. Yeah, can I get a large? Which large? <laughs> the large or the OG large? Oh, the OG large sounds bigger. You know, like if I've never seen the cup sizes before, the OG large sounds bigger to me because it's got more syllables and OG is like, yeah, the, the big tough old guy. No, that's the medium. What are you doing? Go on, say it. What cafe was it? Parcha. <laughs> The OG large, I can only imagine that they're doing that because they don't want, basically they would have their regulars, right? They would usually get a large, which is now the medium or should or the OG large. And they would go, can I get a large? And then you give them the really big one. And they go, I wanted a large. <laughs> now, instead of going, oh, well, we have a new size. So what you like to order is a medium. And then them going, oh, I'll just remember that. <laughs> They've instead decided to fucking confuse it every even more because here's the thing. Those regulars that are ordering what is now a medium, they were never ordering the OG large. They were ordering the large. So you've made it more confusing for new people and the regulars because they're going to go, can I get a large, thinking they want an OG large, and then you're going to have to go, actually, the large is actually now the OG large, and now they're going to go, well, why wouldn't you just call that a medium? <laughs> that's the worst one I've ever seen it's not the silliest it's not the dumbest one but it is by far the most confusing <laughs> I wanted a large yeah the large is now the OG large the, the, the large is now a new cup sized what's that called oh that's called the large <laughs> shut your shop good coffee though um, so the orthodontist, right? I am finally cleared for surgery, which is fucking amazing. By the orthodontist. I have a meeting with the surgeon next week and he has to agree. But surgeons, to me, from what everyone's told me, seem to be like fucking insane. Like I reckon if my surgeon had it his way, he would just like read a few Wikipedia articles about dentistry and figure it out as he, as he was in there, you know? Like the orthodontist is, is like, oh, you can't do surgery until we gradually move the teeth in, in uh, over like 12 months using braces and to make sure that it all works well for quality of life. I reckon the surgeon will be like, give me a buzzsaw, I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, highly unlikely the surgeon disagrees unless my orthodontist is actually a guy that uh, lives under a bridge and I've been hallucinating every time I go in there. Um but what's crazy is I actually got um, updated molds of my current teeth. And this is crazy from my, uh, my x-ray. It really shows you like how much 
my mouth has changed from the first surgery. So I have my my old teeth as a 3D mold, and now I have my new teeth. Uh, I don't know why, but this time they gave me top and bottom. Like I've got the full fucking chatterbox of my of my teeth, which is really cool. But uh, for for video watchers or the listeners. Uh, I'll show you the difference. So these are my previous teeth. This is what my teeth used to look like. These are two scales. So these are life size. This is my previous mouth uh, with my my overlapping front teeth. And uh, this is my current mouth where it's like nice and straight. You can't really properly see when it's front on, like how much it's changed. It just looks like, oh yeah, his teeth are straight now. But that's not the biggest difference. The biggest difference is actually like the roof of my mouth. Oh, wow. Yeah, the palate expansion. So what they did to the top one was they cut it in half and they widened it. And you know, really, even I didn't really understand like how much it had changed until I saw this. And I was like, holy fuck. Because with the top one, I couldn't even touch the roof of my mouth with my thumb. With the, with the bottom one, which is my current teeth, I could probably fit two fingers there it's like these teeth just about fit like in yeah like within this the the horseshoe of my current teeth i don't know if you can see that so uh that was like a really cool like moment of like oh my god it's actually like gotten so much better um which i guess is why uh um eating has gotten so much easier for me I had no room in my mouth for food, let alone air, while I ate. I was always such a slow eater. And I'm not fast or even normal speed now. But I've noticed, like, man, by the time my, I finish a meal now, my food isn't cold anymore. <laughs> that used to happen to me all the time where I would just deal with it. Or people would eat with me and just get so frustrated. <laughs> Elliot Loney, I don't think I could have, have a, a lunch with him ever again after the amount of times he's had to sit there for 20 minutes watching me eat. He used to call me a diplodocus. <laughs> That's how slow I used to eat. Those fucking uh, dinosaurs that live off oh. leaves and shit. <laughs> um, but uh, what's cool about this mold, all of these, these lines are just like 3D printing. That's not what my mouth looks like. What the, the surgeon's going to do, they see these lines with marker, the black mark. I don't know if you guys can see it on the video. We'll, put a, we'll get Keelan to put an image up here. Uh, these lines have to line up with each other because my, my jaw is a little bit lopsided. So he's going to like take it and kind of rotate it a little bit like that so that these black lines kind of fit because right now they're off center. So, yeah, it's all ending in... I don't know, a year. <laughs> the The orthodontist was like, uh, I had this, the guy who's my orthodontist, his name was Dr. Tran. And I just, I was really there to like listen to him and um, understand more about my health and, and next steps and remember all of the information to take to the surgeon and all that kind of stuff. But the whole time I was talking to him, I just could not stop thinking about that YouTube video that came out in like 2005. Dr. Tram. I'm not a doctor. He's a real doctor. You ever see that? No. <laughs> yeah, really, really good stuff. Um, it, I think I think it came, may, may even have been earlier than, it's like 2000s for sure, I think, of this animation that just makes, that's <laughs> like in hindsight, it's like not even that funny. 15 years ago. <laughs> wow. Pro please play just the, the first. I don't think it's... it's animated. Here we go. 2008. He is a man of action. Mm. The whole time the doctors, the he authors telling me all this crucial information and I just have this stuck he in my is head. He a man of duty. Are you talking to me? Here comes Dr. Trang. This is on my head. Where's that coming from? <laughs> this summer, everyone's favorite action hero returns. What? And he's like, and his name so is it's Dr. really Trang. important oh, for I'm you to remember that when you doctor. meet the surgeon, <laughs> you have I'm to take in your scans and your x-rays and, and the whole time. <laughs> My fucking away. stupid idiot brain is going, Dr. He's Tran, <laughs> he's a real doctor. Enough of it to America. From America. 
and uh, and and uh, <laughs> yeah, man, kind of kind of racist. <laughs> To be honest with you, but I, you know, sometimes you'll be fucking 11 years old and a video will come out and you don't know at the time, but it'll never leave your brain. And, and I'm considering myself lucky that it was this video, Dr. Tran, because for a lot of people, it's just like some Mexican, Mexican cartel (laughs) member getting beheaded with a chainsaw. So, you know, I'll take my, I'll take that over the, over the gurgling. You know what I mean? (laughs) Uh, <laughs> uh, I saw oh. both. Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's good. I, I'm, I'm uh, on Wednesday. I have the meeting with the surgeon, and it's getting real now. It's getting really, really, really real because I think the only thing I do with the surgeon is he looks at what the ortho's done and goes, "Yeah, I agree," and then we just start designing my new head, and we book in a date. I believe on on Wednesday which I was told would be around August. But also if I'm ready, uh, I think he could just go, yeah, two weeks, are you free? There's a spot at the hospital. I don't know. So uh, that's, that's crazy. Um, the, the next thing I do is I, I have this meeting with him and then I think either before or after that meeting, I need to call him and find out. I do the 3D scan because the ortho works off 2D scans for some reason and then just like a 3D scan of my teeth because they're an ortho. This guy does skull. And what he does when he does has the, the file of the scan is I think he imports that into some fucking program and he does the surgery digitally with the program first oh. so that he can like get a really good look idea of like where to cut and what I'll look like after he moves everything. And then I, and, and then I guess he goes, uh, here are your options of skulls. <laughs> here is what I think you will look like with skin and muscle on top of them. Which is really weird, but um, <clears throat> Doctor Tran was telling me, um, as uh, as 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 I was really trying to pay attention while that old YouTube video was bouncing around my head, um, he was telling me because uh, I asked him questions, and here's the thing about specialists and doctors is uh, they they don't like um, when the patient uh, asks questions. Well, they don't not like it. They're just like, they're not used to it because no one ever does. And I was very much this type of patient of just uh, listening and then instantly forgetting and then leaving the doctor's office and going, I don't know what the fuck was just like, when I go into the doctor's office, I used to just turn into a nine-year-old boy sitting there with my mum mm. while she would panic and remember everything. And I would be thinking about YouTube videos that I watched that morning. <laughs> Uh, but now I go in and I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm a fucking, I'm paying attention, you know, I'm listening, uh, I'm an academic weapon. That's what I start doing. So I start asking questions, and uh, the, the, he didn't, he wasn't avoiding my questions, but uh, I, I do know that he definitely didn't want to give me the answers. He wanted to kind of let the surgeon tell me, and it was just like, what I would have to do. <laughs> <laughs> he was just hoping the surgeon would tell me how fucking shit it would be. So before the surgery, a, a week or a couple of days before, I have to go into the ortho and they're going to put more metal in my mouth. They're going to attach hooks and shit and then they're going to hook elastic bands to to keep my mouth shut so that when it's healing, it doesn't move. Like basically, because you can't with a cast, you can't put a, a plaster cast in your mouth, but it's bone that's healing, it can't move. So they used to wire your jaw shut, but if you vomit, you drown. So now they use elastics that can be taken off in an emergency, basically. But it's still, you can't open your mouth. So he's like, uh, so you're going to have to have the elastics on and those are going to stay on for uh, eight weeks. And I thought, oh, okay. Does that mean no solid food for eight weeks? And he winced. (laughs) And he said, well, you know, definitely not for two weeks, which I'm sure you would have known because I wouldn't have been able to eat it, obviously, because I've got no chin. Uh, But he's like, but uh, yeah, they can be taken off and then put back on. But uh, that's, yeah, that's pretty tough. (laughs) And then I was like, oh, okay, that sounds fucking shithouse. But then he he tells me what he thinks is like the worst news. 
I go, I go, what about, uh, what about after I get those off? Like what happens then? And, uh, and he goes, yeah, I, um, uh, normally we let the surgeon tell you this, but, um, and, and he's like, he's like acting like he's about to tell me that, that while I was getting my scans done for fun, they killed my wife and kids, <laughs> you know? And they're like, yeah, they're dead. You know, he was like acting like he was about to tell me the worst thing ever. He goes, uh. After the surgery, even even when you're fully recovered, you're probably going to have to have braces for six months. And I was like, "Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't get, dude. I had a fucking gap tooth and a cheese grater attached to the roof of my mouth with a lisp for six months. Mm. Braces are funny. <laughs> braces are funny. They don't annoy me at all. But he was going, yeah. Every time they, I guess it's because you're an adult. I was never worried about the braces. I always thought the braces were like funny at best or at worst, like, uh, oh, that guy has braces. That's pretty old for braces. No, like I've, I don't think I've ever, ever seen an adult with braces and gone yuck or had a, or other than when I was, when I was 14 and my English teacher had braces, you know, why do all English teachers have braces? phenomenon that uh is yet to be explained um so yeah that's good it's uh the end is in sight uh because that was kind of the last variable uh i think so unless the surgeon disagrees we're good um with the the wrapping your teeth up like um yeah yeah you said to me the other week you had to have like pliers or scissors with you at all times to cut them in case you throw up yeah 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 because i because i i i believe i need to talk to the surgeon about this but because he, cause he, he'll cut here, like in my, detach my whole jaw and cut it in half. And it does get bolted back. But I imagine if I were to really yank, I could just break it or bend it or, or just fuck up what he's done while there's like zero bone there. So instead of unhooking them, which would pull up, and my whole upper palate is detached too, mind you, and just, I'm like my whole, everything below my cheekbones is literally held together with brackets and screws. And the, I think it takes like three months for like the, the soft bone to come back. Like just like the, uh, the scaffolding of bone to grow back, to close these gaps. But it takes like a year for it to be like fully like bone inside and out hardened that, that's gone over the top of the screws and everything. So, yeah, I think uh, you have to cut it if you really have to spew or if you're choking on something. Like I remember uh, reading about it, yeah, with people who had the metal wires, they had to have pliers in their pockets at all times because uh, after anesthetic, it's it's fairly common for people to vomit. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, for me, it's uh, three days in ICU, I believe. Uh, and then, then I come home. Yeah. Which is pretty sweet. Um, and six months recovery. I would say like, uh, for, for me to be able to talk, it's more like, it's more like two months. Mm -hmm. I think like I'll probably be able to, to speak after a month, but in terms of doing a podcast or videos, probably more like two months because, there's obviously getting over the trauma of the surgery, but then there's, there's, you're just really swollen for a really long time because your body is like, what the fuck happened to us? You can't have this type of injury ever in nature, generally ever, because it's all like inside. So yeah, I think it's, it's like, it's like I could probably talk, but I will look so fucked for at least two months. Um, but the, the, most of the swelling goes after what go away after two months, but um, I was there's there's really good like uh, double jaw surgery on Reddit where you can see before and afters and experiences and stuff. The the actual all of the swelling like 100 percent of it doesn't really go away for like a year, so it's not really you. I don't think you'll physically be able to notice it when it's there, but you will notice the difference when the last of it is gone because your face will just get a little bit smaller but i think it'll be <clears throat> i think it will be really hard to tell when the swelling has gone because i'm i want i'm not going back to my old face do you know what i mean 
like I'm I'm my face will change. My healed face will look dramatically different to my face what my face looks like now. So I'll be looking at myself and my new massive chin and jawline and be like, is this what I look like or is this still swelling? <laughs> um so yeah, I don't know. It's it's so now it's getting real. Now I'm like really thinking like fuck. I don't know what I want to look like or what I'm going to look like or what the surgeon thinks. I guess I won't know until Wednesday. Thought How exciting. A great idea for a poster next year. Yeah. You get, before you have this surgery, you're going for a professional photo shoot. Yeah. Take really high quality photos of your face. Yeah. And when you're all healed, completely healed, another photo, poster. Next to just, each other. You just cut yeah. down the middle. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, I think we did do that with the brace yourself photos. We made sure to get some really good ones that were not really branded like the brace yourself tour. Mm. So we have some real good photos of my face. And yeah, I'm thinking like, I like for next year, I really want to go like skulls yeah, uh, as kind of like the motif because we will have all of my scans and all my 3D prints and my befores and my afters and, you know, everyone will have seen the whole fucking journey and all that kind of stuff. Like, I think that's a really cool... A really cool thing. I don't know it's it's like uh, it's uh, it's why I really haven't been making anything other than the podcast. It's like I just want to come come back when I'm actually back, yeah. instead of what I did after the first surgery, which was just like came back when I was like just able to make things, not because I was fully healed. And I never, I also never disappeared either because I pre-recorded a bunch of stuff that you know, what wasn't that great and was filmed under such stress and was just filmed because we didn't want to not, we didn't want to stop and all this kind of stuff. And then, and then I was like, I made this big thing about, all right, I'm going away for surgery. And then I didn't go anywhere. You know, I just, I just started releasing like kind of average reaction videos <laughs> with my friends for a little bit. And then I came back and I was like, all right, I'm back. And people were like, I mean, you do, you, were you gone? <laughs> you just got a little bit shit for a bit there. Um, and then I, and then I just imploded like that fucking submarine. Um, so yeah, this, yeah, I'm just kind of like, uh, very happy to be not making many things at all while I'm ill. And then I'll come back and it'll, not only will I be like, uh, cause I think a lot of not the, the people that listen to this really know, but I think a lot of the casual fans that like, like me and think I'm funny have no fucking idea really what's going on. Uh, and, uh, I think that's compounded by it's such a strange illness to understand or even appreciate how sick you can get from it. Like if I had cancer, everyone would be like, oh man, totally get it. Yes. You know, uh, understand everything. Even if, even it was like non-life threatening or, or whatever, they'd be like, yeah, understand this completely. But this is just like, I don't get it, man. You sleepy. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Oh, I thought I thought it was I thought you were fixed. I thought you already had your surgery. Like I'm getting so many like, hey man, I thought you were better. What's going on? Uh, so I think just like going away and and uh, not only disappearing for a while, but also when I do come back, I have a new fucking face. Is like the ultimate signifier of this is done, it's finished, and I have returned and I'm well, mm. instead of just like. Yeah, like uploading through the healing process average stuff for the entire time so that it happens so gradually you don't even notice when it's finished. I've just been doing shit stuff for like 18 months. <laughs> um, uh, I've got some bad news. Uh, Greeley uh, talked to him recently and he's, uh, he's going back to prison. <laughs> He got a job there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he got some really good news. Uh, it's, yeah, but uh, a few of you shit yourself, didn't they? Um, he got a he got a job in uh, in prison. I'm really proud of him. He's uh, he's not a screw. He's not a guard. He's uh, actually it's crazy. He's moving to Darwin, and he's got a job in a prison. And his job is to help. Uh, the the kids in juvenile prison learn to make music and rap and and express themselves uh, creatively uh, instead of uh, in other ways that may you know land them in adult prison. Um, so it's amazing. It's really cool. Uh, he's going to be living in Darwin, and uh, yeah, I I never in my life thought I would hear I would be stoked about <laughs> really going back to prison. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, he's like, man, you should come up. Nah, 
<laughs> it's Darwin. Too hot. I might go. I'll go and and I'll hate it, but it might be a good story. Mm. You know, I'll do I'll do the 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 sweatiest episode of Spearhead Sundays you've ever fucking seen in your life. Uh yeah, I've never I've never been to Darwin. I do really want to go. I've never gone because I've never really thought that I'd be able to sell tickets there. But now that I have a friend there, I can at least stay with him. That'll make it somewhat cheaper so I don't have to sell as many tickets and I have another reason to go other than to to do a show. So I think that'll be that'll be cool. But uh yeah man, he's uh it's a it's a really fucking cool opportunity and it's kind of what he's been doing in Tasmania anyway, just not not really being employed to do it. Like he has done so much like work for for youth in Tassie by kind of getting the the Tasmanian hip hop scene up and running and the culture of that going and helping everyone kind of cultivate this thing. Uh but obviously, you know, which obviously just keeps kids out of trouble and shit. Uh, it just hasn't been happening in a prison officially being paid for by the government or something. So, yeah, man, really cool, uh, really cool initiative, I suppose. Um, you know, see, that's uh, no prison is ever paying me <laughs> to go in there and, and teach the kids how to tell dick jokes, you know? Why not? I guess probably because none of the kids in there, like, want to do that. You know, I think a lot of kids in prison are like, oh man, I'm going to rap about my experiences because that's what a lot of rap is. You know, there really is no culture that, that brings out a lot of comedians <laughs> other than, than like, uh, than, you know, children of Hollywood producers <laughs> who live in LA, you know, they might give it a crack. Um, <clears throat> all right. I actually had an idea about prisons and yeah. um, making money. I thought it would be such a funny idea because... Um, a lot of like bigger podcast producers I know get paid by schools to teach kids how to make podcasts. Yeah. I was thinking it would be great to get paid to do podcasts, like teach people how to make podcasts in prison. Yeah. And then within the prison, make a podcast with like three jail, what are they called? Prisoners. Yeah. And then try and campaign to be the biggest podcast in the country out of prison. That would be sick. That that's like yeah yeah like every every prisoner has their own radio show yeah you know coming to you live from cell block C <laughs> yeah I think it would be very funny that would be good and and you could set you could like uh, because you're not in prison right uh, <laughs> you could kind of play all sides yes you know like you go you go into the prison you start a podcast with like you start slow or like non-violent offenders you know and just pe- people that are remorseful that regret what they've done. They might be serving three or five years for like tax evasion or fraud or something like that. And then you go, all right, well, I've gotten the hang of this. Then you move up to like, uh, to, to like, you know, homicide, you know, manslaughter, manslaughter, not yeah. murder. Like people who, who, who like got into a self-defense situation and fucking nailed it. Uh, and if that goes well, then you move, then you move up to like people who, who did it and they're proud of it and they would do it again. Mm. And you go, and, and it's like, welcome to the, to the, the bitch deserved it show. And it's just like <laughs> hundreds of episodes of, of why she was really asking for it. And if that goes well, then you start moving into like gang podcasts and you rock up and you know, you go, well, how about them Jews, you know? <laughs> oh, and, uh, well, I, I'm just saying, I'm not saying it's a good thing to do. I'm just saying like, it could be a business opportunity. Yeah. And then you leave that scenario and then you, then you go in to, to like the, to, to the other side and you go, fuck, I'm sick of these white people and <laughs> these white supremacists. And, and, and you just start playing all sides mm. of the prison and, uh, and you just, you know, start this giant podcast network of, uh, of, prisoners putting on shows that uh really only other prisoners listen to Mm. and take away from all that yeah like taking sides and everything yeah australia's biggest prison only podcast network could be very cool yeah that that could be what could be called it could be like um like locked in podcast network that's cool cool. we're fucking locked in i should cut this out of the episode yeah, to, because it's such a good business idea. <laughs> and what's really good, at, <clears throat> if you have a look at um, the American prison system as well, 
is uh, is prisoner is is kind of just a synonym for slave. <laughs> so you can get them to do all these podcasts, and you'd be like, "Yeah, a dollar an episode. You could buy a can of Coke after three episodes." Mm. Meanwhile, you're fucking raking it in because that's what they do. You know, all those prisoners in America, they're making uniforms and uh, and roads and all this other. They, they do recycling there, all this other stuff for cents an hour. Be good. Get them to do some ad reads. Manscaped brought to you. Brought, this episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Yeah, and it's like, well, we can't use them in, within our prison, but I've heard they're good. Yeah, or <laughs> um, we would love to be sponsored by Dollar Shave Club, but we're not allowed to have razor blades. Mm. Uh, luckily, Pedro here has smuggled one in, and it's under his tongue. What do you think? <laughs> how sharp is it? And Pedro's just covered in blood. And he goes, "It works great." Use my code No Snitches for ten dollars off a month. That would be good. Or you could have, um, you could, you could be, you could have a podcast that is in like the really high security, a uh, high profile sex offenders wing of the prison, mm -hmm. and you could do a podcast ad read with Epstein for better help. <laughs> yes. You know, have, are you feeling sad? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't kill yourself because you can have a Zoom call with a guy who promises that he's a therapist. Who do I email to get this started? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. The The Prime Minister. We can start there and work our way down, <laughs> I guess. Uh, you know what was, was funny about when I visited Greeley in prison is... Um, just, did I ever tell a story about how I, how I got forgotten about? Yes, yeah, you told it on stage. Yeah, no, that's a different bit. Oh. But um, uh, no, you've told me. Yeah, yeah, I think I've told you. I went in. So the first time I went in, it was scary and it was high security and and all this kind of stuff. And you have, I think you get, I think it was like thirty minutes in on a box visit, which is like separated by bulletproof glass. Me talking to my friend under supervision, and then after thirty minutes, I'm next to like five other dudes talking to five other dudes, and then um, you know, after thirty minutes, the guard comes in and goes, "All right, that's it," and then you don't see your friend for. For months and and I think the prisoner gets one of those a week I believe um the second time I went in there it was like so different because I think Greeley had been moved to the less the 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 less secure prison like the we trust you guys more area of the prison and they just send me in and I go into the yard of the prison there's prisoners everywhere and and I and I they didn't tell me where to go all this kind of shit it was really scary which is what my joke kind of goes into and then I get to the the part of the box visit, which by the way, another prisoner told me where it was. I was like, uh, uh, I'm looking for you. He goes, hey, just over there, mate. I'm like, oh, right. you're just in the yard. Yeah, I was in the yard. Yeah, and they're <laughs> milling about and, and, and like playing ball and shit. And I was the only visitor as well. The first time there was like five other people with me. Yeah. I was the only visitor and they shut the fucking door behind me and I'm in the yard surrounded by prisoners just fucking, who knows what they've done. They might have murdered someone, but they've been a good boy for the last seven years. So... <laughs> They're allowed to have, you know, un unhindered access to me. <laughs> and then one of the prisoners is like, yeah, she's down there, mate. I'm like, all right, cool. And I go in and, and Greeley's there. And uh, and they forgot about us. They forgot I was in there. So normally you get 30 minutes. I was there for fucking two hours talking to Greeley. And uh, we fucking ran out of things to say <laughs> because I had I had just been touring and stuff and I told him, I kind of told him everything that I wanted to say, but then I ran out after about an hour and a half of talking. And meanwhile, he had been in prison <laughs> since the last time I saw him. So he was just like, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's this exactly the same. Not a second of my routine has changed since last time <laughs> I told you. Uh, here's a couple of conversations I've had. <laughs> and and that's when I realized that the, the time limit of the visit is not necessarily like a punishment to the criminal. It's more so just to make sure you, you, you can just end it nice and it's not awkward. Because after two hours, I was like, after an hour and a half, I was like, I want to leave because I'm kind of with, like, we don't have any, I love my friend. I love my friend. And I miss him dearly and it hurts my soul to see him in a cage. But I have said everything that I want to say to this man and he has no stories left. <laughs> but but at the same time, the free man can't go, 
well, I better let you get back to it. I'm sure you're busy. You know, like I, like he has to end the conversation, not me, because I get to leave and go to McDonald's or see a movie or frolic in in a field <laughs> yeah. and enjoy my freedom. He has to go and walk in a circle around the yard and, you know, go back to his cell. Yeah, from memory, after after you saw him, you came back and we went and saw Doctor Sleep at the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, anyway, man, I'm going to go see a movie. And not one of those movies on VHS that you've seen six times because that's all the prison library has. Just one of the recent ones in a cinema. So I just ended up, I just was like, well, I can't end the conversation. So it, it, it actually was like him going... Well, uh, I think uh, I better. I think I better go and and because uh, you know when you end a phone call, when it's done, you can say anything. Oh, my cat's choking. I gotta go. <laughs> Doesn't have to be true. I'm really busy. Or oh, oh, my my wife just got home from the shopping. I gotta help her bring it in. <laughs> you know, I couldn't possibly use my AirPods for this one. I need I need two hands and two ears. Uh so he was just like, ah, oh, yeah, um, I've had enough of this conversation, <laughs> and uh, and he left, and then I, uh, the, yeah, a guy, he he like knocked. He's like, I think we've been forgotten about. So he had to bat because they lock you in both sides. I'm locked in too, and he had to bash on the door like, ah, oh, you forgot about us. And then after about ten minutes of that, a guard came and got him. And then I was just there and I was fucking stuck. So then I had to start bashing. I was like, hey, I'm not meant to be in here. The guards are probably hearing that going, yeah, that's what they all say. <laughs> Another fucking loony prisoner thinks he's innocent. Eventually they came and got me and they were like, oh, really sorry about that, man. We forgot about you. We were about to leave. It was almost like five something. The reception had left. You know, if I didn't mm. fucking end it, if I ended it like 30 minutes after, I would have spent the night in prison. Um, and then, and uh, yeah, and then I was just marveling over like the lack, like the first time I went in there, I felt like there is the small possibility of my asshole getting looked in. Like the, they pat me down. They went through the metal detector. Do you have any weapons? Do you have, you, you have to lock your phone up and, can't take in even a wallet, like nothing. Mm. Uh, he goes, uh, do you have any keys? I'm like, the chances that 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 a key I had would unlock <laughs> <laughs> handcuffs and a, and a door is wild, but no, I don't have any keys. And uh, the, but the second time they were just like, yeah, go right in, mate. I could have had a had a gun or a fucking camera or anything. I really regretted not. I really regretted like not just taking my phone in mm. just for the photo like how how not for me for him yes like the the amazing album cover he would have gotten out of me accidentally forgetting to put my phone in the bin before i went in um but yeah that's uh that's that's probably the show i think uh we're going to continue on for patreon here we've got our book club mm -hmm. uh the the book club of the month uh our first ever uh book club is now uh, the book we're reading is now concluded. We read Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer, myself and Keel and a bunch of other patrons. We're going to break down that book and discuss it a little bit, see our thoughts on it. And uh, we're going to continue on Patreon. If you want to check that out, uh, sign up to Patreon uh, Loose Beers. Patreon.com slash Loose Beers it is. And you get uh, an extra episode every single week and early access to every single episode that we drop. And uh, yeah, it's a good time, man. We've got a Discord server and all of that. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. So check it out. Thank you for supporting the show. This is my only source of income as well. And uh, it, it, every dollar counts fucking heaps now. Counted a lot less uh, about 18 months ago, but now it's fucking literally the 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 groceries that i buy so thank you very much i'll talk to you next sunday or right now on patreon have a shit one bye <laughs>